<laughs> hey, welcome. My name is Aurora. This is Lavender Hazelwood, which is thanks for gathering. Just like my last Poison Path video I did on the Mandrake flying ointment from Banefolk, where I took you through my experience using the Mandrake flying ointment, um, I'm going to do the same here, but with the Nymphaea flying ointment from Banefolk. Flying ointments were often entheogenic. Um, Entheogens are substances that will change your consciousness in some way or your perception. So while mandrake was hallucinatory, and a lot of them are, I mean, other other things that are hallucinatory would be like cannabis, um, mushrooms, uh, ayahuasca, peyote, um, the toad. What's the toad that people get high off of? These are substances that can be helpful for opening up the psyche and seeing different things or seeing things clearer. So I ordered the Nymphaea flying ointment. It's known for enhancing your dream capacity, but it doesn't have hallucinogenic properties to it. It is an aphrodisiac, it is an anti-inflammatory, it, it, it has apomorphine in it and nuciferin. Those are alkaloids that, well, okay, so nuciferin is the anti-inflammatory. Actually, it's a porphine, which your body changes into apomorphine, which then creates sort of an uplifted pleasant experience. So the other plant that it seems to be related to is the ginkgo biloba plant. Ginkgo is often used for focus and for stimulating blood flow and it is often called uh, nature's Viagra. When they compared the ginkgo with the nymphaea, they had alkaloids that when charted were high in, in similar regions. I've been doing a lot of research on this particular herb. It's really quite fascinating. It's a plant that was revered in ancient Egypt and it was used in many festivals, rituals, rites, um, and even just for pleasure. It's depicted in scenes that are drawn in tomb walls and in temples. You'll see in the artwork Egyptians carrying huge lotus flowers with them or they'll be like painted above their their heads or they'll be carved into temple columns. So this plant was a sedative and it helped people feel good. This is a time when people had a lot of different pains and they didn't know where they came from. So ancient Egypt had, between the 16th century and 11th century BCE, they had temples called sleep temples. By the time Cleopatra was there, they were virtually gone, but the Greeks and the Romans ended up assimilating this practice into their own cultures as well, as well as some cultures in the Middle East. So it kind of spread out all over the place. So sleep temples were essentially like psycho-spiritual hospitals. The the god that they they honored at these sleep temples was Emotep. The priests that worked at this temple were called the sons of Emotep. The priests would take a person through a purification process, which included cleansing, washing, um, fasting, and then they would prepare them through rituals and rites into sleep. These rituals and rites would, would prepare them to dream, and through these dreams they would get messages from Imhotep, and then when the person woke up they would tell the priests, the priests would interpret the dreams and then concoct a prescription essentially. So they would say, here, do this, do that, here's an amulet for whatever, and take these herbs or something. So these sleep temples were healing places that tended to be placed next to water as well because they felt the water had a strong healing presence for people. Nobody's sure exactly what went on in these temples. However, it is a strong likelihood that the Nymphaea Carulia was used to help them dream and get the messages that they wanted or needed for healing. So there's a wash of sort of the history behind the Blue Lotus and also sort of like my interest in, in using it and how it's correlated to ancient history. Scientifically, this Blue Lotus, it's technically a water lily, has not changed its biological profile in 4,000 years. So it is essentially still the same plant today as it was back then, which is really quite cool. So my interest in using this is actually through meditation. I mean, it's always meditation really, but like is trying it out before sleep, so dreaming, 
um, but also with yoga nidra, which is a sort of a meditative practice, but uh, is a full body intentional practice that keeps you sort of like suspended in a liminal place, very much awake. You're halfway between asleep and awake in a lucid dreaming state. Let's go try this. Let's go see what happens. <laughs> I also ordered some loose blue lotus flowers that are dried. I'll leave a link in the description box if you would like to, to give this a whirl as well. Yeah, the tea immediately made me feel super relaxed. It was like all of the burden I had was just like melted off. I could feel a lightness come over physically my being um, and my psyche. I felt a sense of well-being and a sense of like all's good. I feel good. The second time I drank the tea, it was a, a smaller dose and I experienced more activity, so more stimulation. I felt like I could feel my blood sort of infiltrating my body. Like it, I felt more alive. I want to try it again and go back to the amount that I had taken the first time and see if my theory is correct, that the less I took creates more stimulation, the more I take creates more sedation. Here's a cool quote that they found uh, in the hieroglyphs of one of the temples um, about the blue lotus. When you look at its brilliance, your eyes become dynamic. When you breathe in, your nostrils dilate. Well, you can't smell the, the scent of the flower in, in the dried petals. Um, I would say once I, once I drank the tea, my eyes were a little like, um, they felt slippery like more easily there's a, there's more movement in them i'm going to put it somewhere let's see where do i have tension right here here okay so it looks like we're putting it in the collarbone area um i have no idea in terms of dosage how much to put on this is kind of what happened with the mandrake ointment last time I had no idea how much to use and so I overdid it <laughs> um all right we are she says to put it on the temple oh immediate something here all right third eye temple temple neck We'll start there and see what happens. So we are gonna put more on. <laughs> ah, I feel like I'm bathing in it. Da -da -da -doo, da -da -da -doo. Ah. Um, so it's the next morning and my experience with the Nymphaea ointment, um, I felt some tingling in my third eye. It was just this spot right here was sort of like awake. It was like doo -doo -doo -doo. in terms of I think I think what I physically experienced was some relaxation in the muscles here but that's about it um, maybe there was a little bit of sedation that went along with that uh, but in terms of an actual physical feeling that I could pinpoint really specifically it was hard to do that um, in terms of dreams I also felt like I didn't feel any enhancement in dreams at all. I dream pretty vividly, so, and I have a lot of dreams. I, it's not something I struggle with at all. So I'm used to seeing them and remembering them and interpreting them. I did have dreams last night, but I didn't feel like they were enhanced in any, any special way. I feel like with the mandrake, my inner vision, while it's not specific to dreaming, my inner vision is more, 3d feeling it, it's more dynamic feeling um this i didn't get that with um so the tea was great i love the tea that was a very pleasant experience and i definitely felt a, sh a sedating or a calming shift with that i just want to note that everybody's different so everybody's going to have a different experience um with this somebody out there the ointment might be just what they need so that's what i got for you uh p.s so the last saturday of the month which is the 27th saturday the 27th at 
10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we will be doing a yoga nidra and we are going to be drinking the, the tea before we go in. I'm facilitating, but you are invited to come along. You can access it in the Porta and Lemonade tiers in, uh, on my Patreon page. So that's that. Thank you.